I have a question about uh, the specificity of mm -hmm. the prophecies, if you will. So if someone prophesies over you and it's very specific mm -hmm. and that thing comes to pass, whatever it is, do we still consider that just general or do we put well, it under the in, bracket of well, special? That's great because in the categories that we affirm, mm -hmm. you have to say a specialized general revelation. Okay. <laughs> there, okay. <laughs> if you say a special revelation, you're going to get that trap door. Okay. Because special revelation is reserved for something that is infallible, infallible. And, uh, and in our day written down already by apostles and prophets. Okay, uh, the foundation of the church. See, w the reason we have this category of special revelation is to give us a standard, a written standard by which we can judge all other candidates. Okay. Okay, the canon. And it's not as if God spoke one day, okay, everybody, make a canon. But the church found out they needed one. They needed something they could use as a standard to judge all these other things that Christians were saying. And so everything that other people say to us or we get in dreams or premonitions, et cetera, needs to be judged by that. Right. But the reality is, is that the Bible, New Testament included, doesn't give us a lot of information about what you're supposed to do with your life tomorrow and what you're supposed to do. Right. It just kind of gives parameters. Mm -hmm. And then the question is, how do you fill in the, the space between the parameters? You know, if you, if you get a premonition that you're supposed to be an ax murderer, you're not supposed to be. I can tell you, it didn't come from God, okay? Right, right. But if you're, if you're given a premonition that you should serve in Miami, that's your home city, isn't it? Right. Um, serve in Miami, or are you going to get a premonition that you're supposed to serve in New York? See, now, both of those are fine in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, this is where we're talking about the leading of Holy Spirit right. and the providence of God being general revelation. And the, the stronger it is for you, the more specific it is for you, the more specialized it is. Our tendency, unfortunately, is to try to turn that filling in the gap into sort of a scientific thing, a rational, a purely rational thing. Mm. And that's, that is what I'm arguing against here. I'm saying it, rationality, science, even sociology and things like that that we would use to sort of fill in those holes, that's legitimate. It's part of general revelation, but so is your dream. And so is what your next door neighbor said to you. And especially when there are authorities in your life, like your pastor, okay, or your or an elder of some sort, or you've had this, you've had this just pull in your heart that I have to go to Uzbekistan. I have to go. I, I just can't get it out of me. That's the leading of Holy Spirit that fills in those gaps in what the Bible has taught us. And so I think that, yeah, I'm, I'm saying that these are not special revelations in the sense that you must obey it no matter what. You must always submit it to the Bible. And it's not special revelation in the sense that everybody else has to do it. Right. Okay, It's not part of the canon of the church. Right. But it is God speaking. It is God revealing himself because God reveals himself in everything, including those psychological experiences. It, this really is a matter of what we often call vocation. And that's a big problem, especially for theological students these days. Um, theological students these days, in, in America anyway, they think, of, they think of vocation as sort of a, a more or less a business decision. You know, I've been called to be a minister. Now, which church do I go to? Well, what I do is I send out a resume, mm -hmm. I contact them, and I see which one's going to give me the best package, which one's going to pay me the most money, which one's going to give me the best schools for my kids? Which one's going to be the kind of culture I belong to? So we evaluate it sort of rationally. Well, that's nothing wrong with that. But we always need to remember that God may actually be calling a person to a place where they'll pay you less money mm -hmm. and where you won't fit into the culture, where you won't be able to have a nice house. I mean, can you imagine if Jesus had used those criteria for his ministry yeah. <laughs> or the Apostle Paul? Right. Okay? Or... 90% of the ministers of Christ in years past, if that had been the case, then none of us would have been Christians. They would have stayed in comfortable places, the, what I call the yellow brick road to ministry, mm -hmm. and they would have had a pro good professional life, but they would never have sacrificed the ways that they did that then resulted in you and me being Christians. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important for us to get that notion that we must listen to that intuitional, that quiet voice, that 
premonition, that dream, that specialized general revelation, to get vocation, to know what I'm supposed to do with my life now at this time and this place, because that is a form of general revelation.